Hello and welcome. I'm Anka Novakovic with EcoCoach and today I wanted to share three examples of small and medium-sized businesses that have reduced their waste to landfill and also share some takeaways that would be relevant for your business if you're looking at reducing your waste um, and at recycling and at composting. So let's get started. The uh, first of all, you know, uh, reducing waste to landfill can reduce your costs. And a lot of times, you know, when when um, you're thinking of reducing waste to landfill, you're thinking of recycling, right? But what I would say is think about reducing the inputs in your business. So what does that mean? Um, that could mean a few things. For example, um, how, how much do you order and when do you order it? So how many boxes come in to your business? How much packaging do you have on in your products? How much uh, paper and office supplies are being ordered that are actually being thrown out as opposed to uh, being, uh, you know, not ordered at all? So there are some examples. Also, if you work in a restaurant or um, have some sort of kitchen, if you're catering business, uh, how much food are you ordering and how much is actually being thrown away versus being used, right? And I totally understand that you can't right size everything, but there are different ways that you can think about reducing your inputs into your business so that you can then have less waste to landfill. So one example that we're looking at that I was looking at is uh, Peerless Coffee and it's a coffee it's a small business they have a retail store they have an online presence and they also provide high-end coffee to um, East Bay so this is the San Francisco area East Bay hotels and restaurants and um, they had two big sources of waste they had the coffee chaff so the chaff is actually the skin that comes off the coffee bean so when it's being processed and then they had the mylar packaging and the mylar packaging that was being that was waste was essentially from the packaging process so they have they had the packaging process and they when they would calibrate the machine and switch the machine from one size to the other the packaging kept going and so that was a lot of waste that was um, that, that they had to throw away. So they actually um, found a local organization, Stop Waste, that helps Alameda County uh, businesses reduce their waste. And what they did was they got a grant. They actually got two grants. They got a $5,000 grant and they asked Stop Waste to help them identify ways that they could reduce, uh, that they could um, have a recycler or someone take their coffee chaff. And then they got a $100,000 grant for the Mylar packaging. So the first one is the, the coffee chaff. What they did was they had st Stop Waste essentially um, do some research for them because that's, that's what they do and that's gonna be one of the takeaways is to ask for help. Um, and uh, Stop Waste found someone who would be able to recycle their coffee chaff, who would also be able who would take their coffee chaff would also be able to compost their coffee grounds and recycle so that five thousand dollars the first grant that they got from stop waste the five thousand dollars was actually to get recycling bins so that they could store the items that would be recycled by their the third party by their by their uh, vendor vendor excuse me <laughs> And um, then what they did was they looked at um, if there were ways to change the machine that packaged their, their um, coffee uh, bags, so essentially the coffee bags. And unfortunately, because it was a manual process, the calibration was manual, they weren't able to do anything that would significantly reduce the waste. So they took the $100,000 and they actually bought a new ma machine that was electronic computerized and so that would able that would enable um essentially that would stop at the right time so that um the the mylar packaging wasn't lost it wasn't you know didn't keep going and as a result they were able to um reduce their mylar packaging waste by 95 percent, which is huge right and it's a huge cost savings and so some of the takeaways in that instance is First of all, ask for help. There may be organizations out there, there may be grants out there that could help you in your efforts. And if you don't look around and if you think, oh, I have to do it on my own, oh, it's gonna cost too much money, you're not gonna be able to do it. Another takeaway, or you could do it, it's just gonna be kind of on the back burner. And another takeaway here is that sometimes you're gonna need to change your equipment or sometimes you're gonna need to change your processes if you actually want to uh, take action to kind of 
be more sustainable, environmentally sustainable, to reduce your waste to landfill. Now, in this case, they were able to save $110,000 annually. Um, so that's huge. So they got a grant. It was a total of $105,000. And then they have recurring savings every year, which they can then put towards something else. So um, again, thinking creatively, thinking about how you, someone could help you with this, thinking about how you could defray the cost. I think Peerless Coffee did a great job in doing that. Next is a uh, example from the UK, which is the Castle Climbing Company. And in 2009, the Castle, so the Castle Cl uh, Climbing um, Center, essentially, I should say, is a um, also a small business. They have an indoor um, climbing facility. They have a shop. They have a coffee shop, and they have a garden, and um, or a cafe, I should say, not a coffee shop. And um, what they did was they they set out to go zero zero waste in 2009 and they looked at the inputs into their business and what can they do to uh, prevent the waste to landfill right so one of the things that they did and, and by the way in 2009 they set out to uh, go zero waste by 2015 today they have a zero to um, a zero waste to landfill policy so they are doing great in their goal and uh, they've done it a few ways one they looked at their vendors and um, they changed their milk vendor for example so they had they didn't have throwaway bottles they had reusable bottles glass bottles they also used that same vendor for their juices they also had they were selling in their shop they were selling powder um, or energy drinks and so instead they switched to energy powder so that you if you bring in your reusable um, a glass or in your reusable container then you could put the powder and water in there and and change it you know and, and mix it and then you could use it um, they also did no plastic bags, so they they um, got rid of all plastic bags. They looked at how much uh, was being printed in the in the back of the house, like in the office, like paper that was being printed, and if it could be reused or if it could just be not uh, not printed at all. And um, so, with all of those things, they also put in bins. And let me just double check that because I don't want to uh, <laughs> I don't want to give you the wrong information. They put in four bins, I believe, if I recall correctly, that they essentially replaced their um, their uh, trash bins with recycling bins. So it was four um, bins. And they have signs, they educate their customers, they educate their staff. Of course, that is always an ongoing process, right? And so behavior change is something that takes a, a little bit longer to do. But um, they've done that so that it's pretty clear that look we're looking at no waste here what they've also done is they've identified anything that uh, comes from the cafe that is food can be composted in their garden so they have a compost um, uh, area and they also use it for their garden they've also used some of the wood and some other items um, instead of throwing them away they'll find ways to reuse them in their garden and you know, one of the lessons here, what, and one of the things that they've worked at is reusing, right? So first they've reduced the inputs, and this is one of the takeaways is first, figure out how you can reduce the inputs into your business. Second, uh, figure out how you can reuse items instead, and then recycle them, all right? So recycling is actually is less, so to, say, so to speak, eco-friendly than reuse or repurposing. So first think about reducing inputs, then think about reusing or repurposing, and then think about recycling. And so once you have that, you're, and once you start thinking that way, you can kind of change, um, ideally change, and significantly reduce the waste to landfill. And um, you know, one other thing that they've done is they donate any sort of equipment that they no longer use. They have a free cycle account and they, they donate the equipment. Um, so that's that's what the castle does. And then, and they're in the UK. So the first example, Peerless Coffee was in the US. Um, the second, the castle was in the UK. And then the third, which is a chocolate um, chocolatier is in Canada. It's Purdy's uh, Chocolate, and Purdy's Chocolate is could be considered more of a medium-sized business. 
It has a 50,000, 57, um, let me just double check. Yes, 57,000 uh, square foot factory, and it has 70 stores in, in Canada, and also has an online presence. And so they're a confectionery and they're a chocolatier. And um, the way that they looked, they, they decided that they were gonna reduce uh, their waste, and they were working with Climate Smart. And you know what, I should mention, to kind of go back, um, one of the threads throughout all of this uh, throughout these three examples is asking for help. Um, so the castle worked with a company called First Mile Recycling also to figure out how much to recycle as much as they could from the business. Uh, Peerless, I mentioned before, worked with Stop Waste, uh, which was specific to their region, right? So finding uh, organizations potentially that are larger or smaller that could help you out is is one way to do it. Uh, Purdy's Chocolate actually worked with Climate Smart because they wanted to track their emissions, and that's kind of where they started. And that's they started in 2010 because they wanted to reduce their emissions. They started reducing their waste to landfill, and they did it relatively easily, actually. They basically asked one of their staff members to figure out someone or multiple organizations that could uh, recycle, that could help them recycle. And they were actually able to find one organization that took pretty much the majority of the items that they have that were recyclable. All they had to do is figure out a place to store them for when the organization picked them up. And so that was it. And because of that, it, obviously that resulted in less uh, waste, so that resulted in less um, uh, times that the, your their waste hauler would come and so that cost re went down uh, but they also reduced their solid waste by about half and and related emissions by 47 percent in one year right so the takeaway from this um, example is that it doesn't have to be hard right there are ways that you can do this where it could be relatively straightforward, where you can do it in a year. It doesn't have to be kind of a five-year production, right? Obviously, if you are a larger organization, it's going to take longer. But if you are a smaller organization, and you know, I've talked about this in other Facebook Lives. I've talked about about this in my blogs. Um, if you're a smaller organization, you have a lot of advantages in that you have the flexibility, you have the speed, you have the nimbleness to make a decision and to um, take on a project like this and focus on it for a short period of time and get it done, right? I mean, obviously sustainability and all of this is an ongoing process and you can keep reducing your waste um, you know, year after year and you're gonna have new people coming in and you're gonna need to educate everyone, uh, but you know, it's, it's definitely something that is absolutely doable. And so what I want you to take away from this, if you're working at a small business or if you own a small business or a medium-sized business, is there are a few takeaways from these three examples. One is ask for help or figure out someone who could help you. Um, Two is there may be grants that are available for you out there. And so take a look at those. Take a look at those on the local level, on the state level, even on the federal level. It depends on which country, obviously, you're in. And so that's going to differ. Um, you know, ask your staff. Uh, they may have some great ideas or they may be able to help you really quickly or much faster. Uh, another takeaway is it doesn't have to take a long time. And uh, the fifth one is you do need to make sure, so one of the things that I, I kind of alluded to in uh, the castles, uh, kind of recycling and zero waste efforts is that there was um, a education period for their customers and for their staff to kind of get them to change uh, behavior. So you do need to educate and you, you do need to bring people on board. That's, that's part of the process, right? I mean, and the more people you have on board, that's the exciting part, is the more people you have on board, the faster and the easier this is gonna be and the, the uh, more likely it is to not only take hold, but to be a part of your business on an ongoing basis. So, um, you know, I hope these are great, these are examples that uh, support and inspire you to reduce your waste in your business. If you are looking at sustainability, looking to do more, I definitely encourage you to go to our website 
www.eco-coach.com. There's a free download of a checklist, kind of a, a starting checklist to figure out where you are today and where you could be going. It gives you um, some ideas, I think, and it, you know, it, it, it could be for a smaller business and different types of businesses, right? This is for office-based businesses, retail, hospitality. A lot of these things apply across the board. And obviously there are other things that are very specific to your industry. So I would encourage you to do that. And in the meantime, here's to your sustainability success and have a fantastic day.